every place we go to, the first time someone sees our machine, I mean, their, their jaws drop because it is a really cool looking machine. I mean, it's a big video screen of a picture winding up and the ball comes out. Everyone's like, wow, man, that's so cool. Hello there, it's Rick Nusky. This is the My Future Business Show. I hope you're doing really well. It's so great to have you back with us, joining us on the show. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. Not sure how you found the show, but I'm so glad that you did because today you are in for a treat. Now, I'm an avid sports person. I love sports of all kinds. So this is a really great time for my background. And we're going to explore some amazing topics with the wonderful Mr. Adam Battersby. Welcome to the show, Adam. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, you are the president and VP of sales and marketing at ProBatter Sports, and you and I are going to be talking about how this game-changing sports technology has not only revived the love of baseball and other sports, but it's helping thousands of players improve their on-field performance. Now, as I've just tied in earlier, I've loved cricket personally for the longest yeah. time, and I've always mm -hmm. wondered to myself, geez, I wish I could get better at that, or I wish I had a better stance. And I always <laughs> remember, you know, thinking there's got to be a better way to, to do all this. And we're obviously going to be talking at, at length uh, about this particular topic, Adam. But first of all, tell us where you're calling in from today. Yeah, I'm calling from uh, Milford, Connecticut, which is uh, right outside New Haven. Uh, where Yale University is. Fantastic. Is that home for you or, is that, or do you travel there for work? How does it work for you? Yeah, I, I actually live about 30 miles south in Norwalk, Connecticut, which is about 45 miles north of New York City. What do you like about the place where you live? What do I like about it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a nice area, although it's getting a little congested actually. Oh. And uh, it's getting very expensive. So other than that, it's a really nice area. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, life growing up, because I think the My Future Business show separates itself from others because we talk not only about the nuts and bolts of business, but about the people that run the business. Tell us about life growing up. Yeah, so growing up, um, I was always a big sports fan. Uh, my father was always my baseball coach, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, you know, he always, uh, you know, trying to teach me, <clears throat> you know, all about baseball, all about technique and, and all that stuff. And uh, growing up, we also had a batting cage in our backyard um, with a generic two-wheel pitch machine. And that's kind of where this whole pro batter idea came from, in the yes. backyard uh, heading against that pitching machine. Yeah, well, it, it's it, Greg's your father, isn't it? And that's his name? Yes, Greg, yep. So I know he had a, a lot of involvement with pro batter, and I'd love to talk about that uh, momentarily. But, uh, you know, who are other people in your life that uh, do you think, um, I guess, in those formative years had an impact on you, who were influential in your life? Do you have people like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say uh, definitely both my parents. Um, they're always there um, for me growing up, which was very nice. Um, I would say a lot of my sport coaches. Um, there's a few really good coaches I had growing up. Uh, especially in high school that taught me a lot of good life lessons and uh, and I think they were definitely a big part of who I am today. There's a lot of, uh, I guess, separation about the My Future Business Show and the way we approach it, Adam, in terms of giving new and up-and-comer up uh, startups and entrepreneurs, those who want to be like yourself. Um, tell me, is it important to have people around you that you can learn from, mentors and things like that, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I would surround yourself with as many, you know, <laughs> with as many people as you can, especially you know, fellow entrepreneurs, um, just people who've done very well for themselves, um, positive people. Um, yep. Uh, definitely, yeah, hundred percent. Did you ever have days where you thought, "Oh, wow, this is this is getting hard, and I don't know if I can do it"? What do you What do you say about mindset? You gotta, you gotta just, you know, basically work through it. I mean, there's days like that that always come around, and mm. you know, and, and it's not uncommon. And you gotta just work through it, and remember and remind yourself of why you started. And and usually the next day, or, or you know, after a good night's sleep, it, it's, <laughs> you know, you, you know, it's back to normal. So um, you know, it's tough. I mean, running a small business is definitely tough, especially in this day and age with, you know parts and expenses and all that stuff but you know you got to remind yourself why you started yeah absolutely great feedback thank you now you just touched on sleep and i think about routine and i think about how important it is for me to get a good night's sleep are you an early riser i am up at 5 a.m monday through friday and then i sleep in to about 6 30 on this on the weekend yes beautiful i love it now what happens on a day like uh you know today what's a typical work day look like for you 
Yeah, so uh, like I said, up at five uh, yep. at the gym, uh, get get a good sweat in early, then come home, help get the kids ready for school or camp, and then I usually get in around, just say usually about nine, just because I have to drop the kids off, and then go through emails, go through reports, uh, sales calls, you know, put out any fires, um, yep. see how everything else is going in the business, and then... Um, then it's always something else comes up from there. <laughs> yeah, isn't there, just Now, I always think about the 80-20 rule. I think um, what what are the top 20 things that uh, any entrepreneur should be looking at uh, during their day? And please don't say email. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, email's always there. <laughs> it's always uh, there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you got to be looking at the future and the present and see remind yourself where you are or see where you are and, and remind yourself where you have to be and how – what you have to do to get there and yeah. just I, I constantly make lists i constantly go back to my lists you know and see how close i am and what i accomplished and and hold myself accountable and that's what you got to do you know when i was growing up i remember walking around uh the suburbs and trying to make some money and uh, I, I would do anything from selling cookies to, to washing cars and mowing lawns what was your first entrepreneurial experience well my first job let me see i think it was uh <laughs> I was making bagels. Bagels, wow! <laughs> Beavers bagels. They were excellent bagels in high school. <laughs> yeah. What do, What do you think you've learned? You know, what's the one big thing you've taught? You learned just uh, about entrepreneur, uh, being an entrepreneur. Do you think? Uh, it's tough. It is a long day. It is. You're very scattered. You got to. You're very scattered. I mean, one day, I mean, for example, this week I, I just got a call from a guy coming down from Canada to see machines, and then you got to scramble, get all your stuff done before that because you know it's going to take a lot of your time. You gotta clean the office. You gotta. It's just you're all over the place. You know, one day you're cleaning toilets, the next day you're answering phones and talking to Major League Baseball general managers. You know, it just yeah. your day always changes, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be flexible with that. It's it's a crazy business model. I love it. I've uh, I've looked and researched quite deeply into Pro Batter and all the wonderful things that it's doing. Now, I'd love to go back to I guess the genesis of your journey, especially when it comes to your father Greg, because I know he helped you improve not only your game but also the Pro Batter business. Would you mind talking a little bit about that part of your journey? Yeah. So so basically, uh, I'll tell you how it started. So um, it started, you know, in, in our batting cage, growing up in our backyard, and we had a two wheel pitching machine. Um, yep. It's a jugs to a pitch machine. Yep. And the way it works is, you know, you hold the ball in your hand, you raise it up so the batter sees, and then you, you drop it in the wheels. Sometimes the ball goes through smoothly. Sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes it's hard to time the ball coming out right. Yep. Um, and then when you want to change the pitches from, say, a fastball to a curveball, you have to adjust the dials, which are the wheel speeds in the pitch machine. You have to tilt the pitch head of it. You have to test pitches. So at that point, you know what's coming. You know, there's no – there's no guessing. You know what pitch is coming. Yep. And you have to simply just know where to put your your baseball bat to hit the ball. You know, you mm -hmm. don't learn basically how to improve. So from there, we took it one step further. We came up with a three-wheel pitch machine with more realistic breaks and curves, created a whole pitch database, and controlled the pitch machine by a big color touchscreen. So you have 10, they have 10 different pitches, any speed from 40 to 100 miles an hour, any location inside and outside the strike zone, you do sequences, you could do repeat a pitch, um, and, and that's what basically started. And then, then me and my dad were just, my dad originally started it. I was in college, graduated in 2001, and then um, started off in sales, and then worked my way up to, uh, you know, to, to running it, which has been a fun journey. I bet. Now I can. I remember, you know, like I mentioned earlier, in in indoor cricket training when the weather was bad, you still had the ability to use this machine. But all it was, in my experience, was two small tires, and you'd uh, yeah. shove a ball in between it. And I thought to myself, inherently, this is unsafe. Now, I, <laughs> with your system, clearly, there's none of that exposure. Was that? Would that be fair? Yes. Yeah, so there's a big video screen in front of the pitching machine. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows a whole video windup of a pitcher or a bowler for cricket uh, run up or wind up before the ball comes out of a small hole in the video screen. So the machine's all protected by that video screen. Um, and yeah, and it's 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 a three wheel pitching machine, like I said earlier. So it has a little bit more. It's more sophisticated than the than the two wheel machine. It, it allows for better breaks and curves and more realistic pitches now i know that the ones that i used to use uh, nothing like your um proprietary system uh, they weren't too portable tell us a little bit about the portability and the types of sports that can benefit from this 
Well, the machine actually is not very portable because it's kind of heavy and there's a barrel feeder attached to it and a video mm -hmm. screen and all that stuff. Um, but we are now coming out with more portable machines because uh, the newer model is a lot smaller. Um, we actually installed a, a machine in a high school in Minnesota uh, and the high school had a shared space. They shared the space in the gymnasium with the basketball team. So we put the whole system on big caster wheels, so after they use it, after practice, they could just wheel it off to the storage location. Uh, so that was pretty cool, actually. It was a pretty cool setup that they, they made over there. Yeah, I noticed, uh, because I, I saw on some of the literature that you had uh, uh, the system on trailers. Is that still happening? Is that how yeah, it so, yeah, so we actually have in our back parking lot, we have a small trailer with the machine in the back and a big inflatable batting cage that comes out. Uh, we have a generator too hooked up to it, so you can essentially bring it anywhere you want, whether it be you know tournaments or birthday parties or you know corporate outings. Uh, it's a cool, it's a cool machine. You, you know, you take it on the road, you show more people, you know, what we can offer, and it helps bring in a little bit of money as well, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely, always very nice. Now I can I can see uh, a wide range of people being interested in this. You've obviously talked about businesses who are not necessarily sports people. Obviously, you've got the local. Um, uh, teams that would get a lot of use out of this. Uh, what's the take-up been like? Yeah, so basically we sell to a wide range. We sell to like commercial batting cages, training centers, um, high schools, colleges, Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball players. Uh, and we've been actually doing a lot of home installations too or semi-private installations. Um, sometimes people put it in their basements. Sometimes people put it in their, their factories if they have extra warehouse space so that that's been a nice little market for us so what um coming back to the the pitches you were talking about you talked about the 10 different types of pitches or, or i don't know is there 10 how many actual pitches pitching types are there yeah so we have 10 different pitches that we offer so it's a fastball curveball change up slider a slurve a cut cutter splitter sinker uh and also a curve two which is more a of a 12 to 6 curveball so it breaks more vertically like a Kershaw curveball almost. So everything's covered from A to Z, you could say? Yeah, I mean, the only thing that we don't offer is a knuckleball just because it waffles so much, so it's yeah. kind of hard to control it and pinpoint your accuracy like the other pitches. Yep. Um, knuckleball is a pretty wild pitch, though. Yeah. I, I know that uh, from the video that I've, I've seen uh, promoting the, the product that you've had some pretty significant type of players using this and endorsing yeah. it. Tell us about uh, your relationship with those types of people. Yeah, so we have about 25 machines or sold about 25 machines to professional baseball, uh, both major and minor leagues. Mm -hmm. We sold to uh, a bunch of players, uh, big name and smaller name players, which have been a lot of fun dealing with. Um, and in the cricket side, we sold to Cricket Australia, two machines to them, the ECB in the UK, the ICC, which is the International Cricket Council in Dubai, um, you know, New Zealand, Australia. We, we sold a lot of machines over there, and that's been a, a really cool market that we never thought existed or we never planned on. So when it came about, it was it was cool. You know, we had a, we had a little <laughs> support, but uh, it was definitely a lot of fun doing it. Well, the beauty of uh, you know shows like this is that they're obviously global, so hopefully we can extend that reach for you and get some more market penetration, as it were. Now, tell me a little bit about the other sports that uh, your your products can be useful for. Yeah, so so right now uh, we just do three: the baseball, softball, and cricket. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball is by far and away our biggest sport, but. We just came out with a newer machine a couple of years ago, which is a lower price machine, which has really opened up the softball market a lot. Um, so, so those three sports are, are, are the, the main ones. But we have looked into other sports as well, and maybe down the road we'll, we'll look to exploring those sports a little bit more. There seems to be an opportunity for, I guess, a, 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 an up-and-coming entrepreneur to sort of hire and lease this type of system. Is, would that be a good fit for somebody who's into sports? Yeah, yeah, we actually have a couple of our customers buy these machines and they place them locally, um, and then they they do a revenue share or you know or, or pay by pitch kind of scenario. Um, so it's almost like an ATM scenario. You know, you buy the ATM and then you, you place them all over. Uh, granted, it is a little bit more expensive than an ATM, but mm. it's definitely a good revenue source. You know, you, you you started that with with your father with this idea, and uh, you're taking it step by step. But what's it make you feel like when you see it being used out in the field, and to see the realization of a dream? 
it's pretty cool to be honest. I mean, every place we go to, the first time someone sees our machine, I mean, their their jaws drop because it is a really cool looking machine. I mean, it's a, a big a big video screen of a picture winding up, and the ball comes out. And everyone's like, "Wow, man, that's so cool!" So it's it's been wild. And then um, you know, some of the bigger name customers, that's been really cool too. We see them hit against it, and it's been a fun ride. It really has been. Now, I know that um, the screens, at least the ones I saw, they probably would have been DVD initially when you started out. How has that technology improved? Has it gone to, you know, 4K, 8K, whatever um, pixelations they're using now? How clear is the image on the screen? Yeah, it, it is pretty clear. Um, we do have to update our videos because some of them are a little bit on the older side, mm. which, would, which would mean, you know, nicer new videos. Um, but basically, I mean, the projectors, when we first started, the, the projectors were like 2,000 lumens, and that's the brightness. Yeah. And it was like $2,000. And just like computers, they get cheaper and better, you know, as years go on. So now we're using a 4,500 lumen projector for, you know, 1000 bucks. So it's crazy how, how they're getting better and cheaper. Um, but, yeah, I mean, everything, technology is getting so, so, so much better. So you got to just explore the new technology and see what fits and see what looks best. I'm really interested to, cause uh, given my perspective of, you know, the potential market for this product, I'm, I'm wondering what sort of steps are afoot to go more international. Is that an active thing that you're pursuing or is it just largely across the States? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we have, uh, I would say about 50 machines international, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit more around there. We have uh, a lot in South Korea, uh, and then a, a decent amount of Canada, and then from there, there's they're spread, you know, all, all across the world. But you know, we're always looking to 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 expand. So we're always actually looking, you know, at well, different markets and how we can grow. If there's anybody on the uh, call today is interested in this sort of thing, we're going to be sharing the details with you a little uh, later on in in the show, where you can find Pro Pro Better and all versions of it. Now, tell me a little bit about the support network behind this, because presumably along the way they'd require maintenance and somebody to look at them and support them. How does that side of the business work? Yeah, so so we have a service department here at Pro Better, and uh, if anything happens, you just call, email um, the problem or error code. And then, uh, then we'll get you back up and running. Um, we, we realize that downtime is lost revenue, so we try to work with you as quick as we can. Um, and also Zoom calls. A lot of times we set up a Zoom call to get some eyes on the machine to see exactly what's going on, which helps us better understand the problem and uh, you know it, it enables us to fix it quicker. Yeah. Uh, for international customers, we always recommend spare part, like a spare part kit. Yeah. Um, there's a few little things that they don't go wrong that often, but if they do go wrong, you can be down for a few days because international, you know, shipping is a little bit slower. It is what uh, it is. Yep. Yeah, it is what it is. So, um, so that's what we always recommend. Now, when a new customer gets this wonderful machine, um, how how difficult is it for them to set up? You know, I've never used one before, and it's just about to throw a fastball at me. <laughs> yeah. how, how do I calibrate it? You know, how do I get used to it? Yeah, so it's funny because we used to always install the machines for all the customers. You know, we, mm. we have guys fly out all across the world. Basically, you know, the guys be on the road every single week. And once COVID hit, we basically realized that we could do all this stuff by Zoom. So oh, now yes. we print out directions. Yeah, and, you know, with pictures and show them how to set it up. If they have any issues, you know, we set up a Zoom call, get some eyes on it, show them, you know, how to do it. And it's just made everyone's life a lot easier and a lot cheaper, too. Fantastic. Yeah, now that's the way to go. Efficiency is the key. Now, uh, is your PX3 the top of the line? Which one's the it top is. of the line? Yep. And yep, that's correct. the combo pitching bowling video simulator. Yes, yeah, so the PX3 uh, is our own three-wheel machine, and that's the one controlled by Big Color Touchscreen. And that one can do baseball, softball, or cricket, or a combo, like baseball, softball, or all three baseball, softball, cricket. What's the uh, size of the projector screen? Is it uh, like a three meter by three how large is it yes yeah, so um the regular px3 is 100 inches wide by 75 tall so it's like eight by seven or something or along yep. those lines yep. but the combo has a bigger video screen and that one is about 11 feet wide by 10 feet high oh, wow. there. So, yeah it's a much bigger video screen and, and it looks a lot better so, and we also use an upgraded projector on that one which is like 5500 lumens so that one shows really really nicely I can imagine the the clarity in that. Now, tell me, is 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 there an option for like a purchase situation and a lease? What is it? Just straight out purchase. How does that side work? 
Yeah, so we do lease them. Um, we use always use a third party lender, and uh, a lot of times it's a lease to own. Uh, so you know, it's a five year term typically, and then at the end of the five years, you pay one dollar or ten percent of the purchase price, and it's mm -hmm. yours to keep. Mm -hmm. So we do a decent amount of leasing. Um, also, we always recommend trying your own bank as well, because a lot of times your own bank will have a lower rate and a quicker turnaround just because of the banking history you have with them. Yep. Um, yeah, but we could definitely do both. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I, I know that uh, different sports have different styles of balls, but you have one proprietary ball that you use in your system. Is that correct? Yes. Well, for baseball, there's two that we recommend. Um, one is a leather uh, baseball with Kevlar low uh, lower seams. Mm -hmm. um, and it basically lasts longer. I mean, pitch machines kind of tear apart leather baseballs pretty quick. Um, so this ball is going to last a lot longer. And then we also have a white dimple ball with red seams on it. It looks like a real baseball. And, uh, and we recommend that because that lasts a lot longer and it's a little bit more accurate. So that, that's a really good ball. I'm loving this call. Thank you so very much for sharing it. I've, I've already got mm -hmm. much more of an insight into pro batter sports and all the different options. Now tell us a little bit about your partnership with ECMMS to, uh, for, your, for the, I guess, your growth needs. Yes, they, they've been they've been wonderful. Uh, they're the largest contract manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they do all the Apple products, the iPhones, the iPads, and it just made our life a whole lot easier. Uh, you know, we used to always manufacture here, and manufacturing here just it, it just it was Painful. good in a way and cheaper, but it was kind of a pain. I mean, it's, you know, it's you're always waiting for trucks, you're ordering parts, mm -hmm. you just it just. It's just a lot of work. So now what we can do is outsource all of that and just worry about growing the business, you know, worry about sales and, and marketing and, and how we're going to, you know, get to the next step, which has really freed up a lot of my time as well, which has been really nice. Well, tell me a bit about the next step because I'm always wondering what, what goes on in somebody like your uh, your mind. You know, you're obviously very busy. You'd always be thinking, I wonder, is it very difficult for you to rest at night? Do you <laughs> Do you have a busy <laughs> mind? Yeah, it, it, it runs around a lot. Um, I typically wake up with a, 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 an email, reminders, and notes. And <laughs> uh, but I guess I guess that's a good thing. Um, but uh, yeah, we're always going to grow. I and mean, like I said, I mean, maybe explore different sports. You know, how how can we make our machine better, faster, more durable, cheaper to produce, all that. Yeah, um, yeah. So you always got to get better, you know, if you don't, then someone else will <laughs> and take over your sales, which, which you never want. Well, this is the thing. You'd be the, obviously the face of the business in many respects. Do you have some sort of a mascot or anything like that, or are you doing all the networking? And, and if so, how important is, uh, are those relationships to, to growing your business, do you think? It's very important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Networking is huge. Uh, I mean, if, I mean, just getting to Major League Baseball, for example, I mean, it's hard to get in that market. It's, I mean, it's you can call them all day long, and, and it's they won't pick up the phone. But it's, if you have a connection in there, then yep. it's easier to get in. Yep. Uh, there's no guarantee they're going to buy it, but it's at least it's, they'll take the phone call, which is so it's important. So networking is definitely very important. It's a, it's a beautiful thing about the internet and shows like this is just that six degrees of separation. There only needs to be yeah. one person to listening to the show today and hopefully uh, give you a call, make uh, reach out to you and uh, take this business one step further because it's sure and uh, certain deserves it. Now, tell me a little bit about the coaches corner. I know that you've got a lot going on in there. Yeah, so um, basically a lot of our customers or most of our customers are coaches. So you know, we like to share different training um, ideas, you know, what works for you, different ideas you can you can use in practice to make your, your practices more efficient, um, just different tools like that that really allow, you know, all, all the coaches and players to get better. Um, that That's that's the, the name of the game, you know, for us. Is that, um, is that possibly another machine d dedicated specifically for them? How does that side work? I, I can see a potential there. For the coaches? Yeah. Yeah, it's really the same machine. Um, yep, yep. Yeah, it's really the same, the same machine, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, um, it's certainly, it's fascinating just the way, you know, you've melded technology with the love of sports and, you know, everybody globally loves uh, different types of sports and it's a real credit to you, all of the things that you're doing with the business. But now, when somebody wants to connect with you and they go to your website, what exactly will they find across your website? Yes, so our website is probatter.com, 
And if you go to the website, you can see uh, pictures and video of what we can offer. Um, sometimes it's hard spending. Our machines range from eight grand to about twenty-eight thousand. So right. a lot of times, people want to see video. They want to see pictures. They want to see visual of what it's like before they spend that much money. Mm. Uh, so we make sure we have video of the machine. We also have additional videos and pictures if people you know want that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but also has descriptions of what we can offer, uh, pricing, uh, benefits, all, all that good stuff. So is, uh, do you have like a central place that people locally can come visit you? And do they use that service or will you travel to them to do demos? So we have, we have a combo machine in our back uh, warehouse that we can mm. give demos with. Uh, we don't have a batting cage set up. We used to have a batting cage set up, but we took it down because it's more manufacturing now. Yeah, it was before this this new um, you know uh, relationship with Foxconn, but um, but yeah, but we also have customers all across the world. So if someone calls up from Wichita, Kansas, for example, I can direct them to a customer within you know uh, hopefully within a, you know half an hour, hour, two hour drive. And there's that networking effect going on again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, usually customers are very accommodating with other people looking at their machine as long as they're not direct competitors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that love of sports is the common thread, isn't it? Yeah, but it, but it's it's always nice. I mean, you know, having a customer, if I have a customer, you know, in Oklahoma that wants to talk to other customers, you know, it's nice to have a, a, a list of customers that he can call and kind of just, you know, pick their brain of, you know, how, what works for them, what hasn't worked, you know, where you get your nets from, where you get your turf from, all that stuff. So it's been, it's been a nice little customer list that we have, and, and it's I really appreciated, you know, for, for all, our, all of our customers. Fantastic. Look, this has been a wonderful call. If anybody on the on the show today is interested in this, I'm sure there are plenty of people, no matter where you are in this big, wide, wonderful world of ours now, um, where else can people connect with you and learn more and maybe talk with you directly, Adam? Yeah, so uh, again, the website's probatter.com. Um, and you could always call the office, which is 203-874-2500. Um, and also, if you want to email, uh, easiest and quickest email is sales at probetter.com. Well, and, there you go. Uh, that that, that wraps that wraps it up pretty well uh, right there. If you're on the call today and you're going to want to learn more and connect with Adam, um, certainly click the link below this post. As always, no matter where you find this interview, you're going to find the links back to ProBatter Sports, which is at probatter.com. And with all that being said, Adam, this has been just one of those wonderful calls. Thank you very much for the insight into ProBatter Sports. And thank you very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you. I appreciate it.